Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received yesterday at Sakir Palace the credentials of five newly appointed ambassadors to Bahrain from Germany, Pakistan, Belgium, Greece and Poland. The German ambassador to Bahrain, Kai Tamer Buchmann, arrived at Sakir Palace, where he was welcomed by the head of the Royal Protocol and an official ceremony was held for him. The ambassador then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty and the ambassador. The Pakistani ambassador to Bahrain, Afdal Mahmoud, arrived at Sakir Palace where he was welcomed by the head of royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for him. The newly appointed ambassador then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty and the ambassador. The Belgian ambassador to Bahrain, Peter Abbott, arrived at Sakir Palace where he was welcomed by the head of royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for him. The ambassador then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty and the ambassador.
The Greek ambassador to Bahrain, Andreas Papadakis, also arrived at Sakia Palace, where he was welcomed by the head of royal protocol, and an official ceremony was held for him. The newly appointed ambassador then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty and the ambassador. The Polish ambassador to Bahrain, Paul Litovich, arrived at Sakia Palace, where he was welcomed by the head of royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for him. The newly appointed ambassador then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty and the ambassador. His, Maj His Majesty the King hailed the relations between Bahrain and the countries of the ambassadors and the progress in all fields, wishing them success in their diplomatic duties of bolstering cooperation with the Kingdom. The ambassadors conveyed the greetings of their country's leaders and their wishes of abundant health and happiness to His Majesty and further progress and prosperity to the Kingdom, commending their ties between the countries and Bahrain. Also present were the personal representative of His Majesty the King, the Minister of the Royal Court, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Minister of the Royal Court's follow-up and the Chief of Royal Protocols.
the first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received today at his office in Al Wadi Palace the President of Bahrain Cricket Association, the BCA, Salim Elias. His Highness Sheikh Khalid was briefed on the programmes and events of the BCA in the next stages which aim to develop the sport. For his part, the President of the BCA expressed thanks and gratitude to His Highness Sheikh Khalid, affirming His Highness's remarkable efforts that will drive the progress towards a more advanced and bright future for sports in the Kingdom. He added that the Association is keen on implementing programmes that contribute to continue the efforts of developing the sport. His Highness received a certificate granting His Highness the Honorary Presidency of the Association in appreciation of his support and directives of developing the sport. His Highness also received a commemorative gift on the occasion. The Board of Directors of the Real Estate Regulatory Authority, RERA, held a meeting chaired by the CEO of RERA, Sheikh Salman bin Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, where the meeting included discussions regarding the latest developments in the authority. The CEO of RERA said that the Board has approved the issuance of important decisions, including the decision to license appraisers in the real estate sector, the decision to inspect, investigate and comply the decision regarding the obligations and duties of the real estate agents and sales agents and a draft resolution on combating money laundering, terrorism and proliferation. He affirmed that these decisions will lead to achieving sustainable development. For their part, the board members have taken measures to encourage investment in this vital sector to work with easy and clear administrative procedures and to provide an information database to assist investors in this sector so the corporation achieves its objectives to promote the advancement of the real estate sector as well as to achieve Bahrain's economic vision 2030. The Ministry of Education is implementing construction projects for new academic buildings in three public schools, which are the West Reefa Primary Girls' School, Al Maharak Primary Girls' School and Al Salam Primary Girls' School at a cost of 2,264,000 Bahraini dinars. The Minister of Education reviewed the progress of these construction projects and expressed the Ministry's appreciation of the support of His Majesty the King, his Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for the efforts to develop education. The Minister stressed that the design of these new school facilities came in line with the requirements of the Ministry's development projects, especially the enhancement of the e-learning system in the classroom and scientific laboratories. He commended the cooperation of the Ministry of Works and Municipal Affairs and Urban Planning in the implementation of these projects. The new academic buildings will accommodate about 875 students and includes 25 classrooms equipped with e-learning tools and other school facilities. The Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, welcomed the Executive Secretary of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change board members and participants in the 21st Green Climate Fund meeting, which is hosted by the Kingdom of Bahrain, represented by the National Oil and Gas Authority. More in this report with Sheikh Mohammed. The Kingdom of Bahrain is the first country in the West Asian region to host the Green Climate Fund in its 21st edition. The Minister of Oil praised the role played by Bahrain at the regional and international level in addressing the phenomenon of climate change. We're very gracious for uh, the Green Climate Change Fund to accept uh, our invitation for them here. As you know, what we have here is uh, uh, the uh, people responsible for the board uh, of directors, uh, the last board of directors for the uh, Green Climate Change Fund. Uh, their deliberations would start tomorrow. They have very important agendas on, uh, on the table and uh, Bahrain would be remembered as a historic uh, point, hopefully, for the future of this uh, important international collaboration. Bahrain, as the only small island state in the region, in the Middle East, uh, is facing greater challenges than other nations and uh, with that the need to have international collaborations and partnerships uh, with specialized organizations whether under the United Nations umbrella or with the Green Climate Fund in this case. The meeting focuses on discussing the support and funding provided by the GCF to countries in order to assist them in implementing their climate change adaptation projects. And we are very happy to be in the region and um, I think it sends a very strong signal that the government of Bahrain is very serious 
about leapfrogging to greener and also uh, committed to climate change action. I think uh, it's not only Bahrain, around the world, the urgency of climate action is very important. We have some very important issues to decide on, the most important issues like the replenishment, that's to say climate change is happening. The IPCC report last week published and presented in GC, GCF headquarters in Sandu in South Korea made the point that climate change is happening faster than we expected and uh, it's sort of ahead of the curve and now we need to be very urgently responding to the challenges of climate change around the world. The Kingdom of Bahrain has excelled internationally in the industry of conferences and specialized exhibitions and continues to do so, with the National Oil and Gas Authority consistently organizing high-level events, providing people with platforms to share knowledge, opinions and expertise. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Shogh Mohammed. Upon the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to find prompt solutions to alleviate traffic congestion and enhance traffic flow in various regions in the Kingdom, the Minister of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning, Issam bin Abdullah Khalaf, stated the Ministry has completed the implementation of two projects to provide a right turn at the Wali Al Ahda roundabout leading to the southern end of Sheikh Khalifa bin Salman Avenue and the construction of an exit from Buri Village leading to the Siam Avenue. The Minister of Works added that the two projects come as part of a comprehensive strategic plan of mega road network projects, noting that the road constructions are made to further develop Bahrain's road network commensurate. The Minister of Information Affairs and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Bahrain Institute for Political Development, BIPD, Ali bin Mohammed Ali al Ramahi participated in the 2018 Media Forum on Risks and Threats held in Abu Dhabi and organised by the UAE Supreme Council for National Security. The forum included a number of workshops and discussion sessions in which a number of researchers, academics and specialists in the field of media and security sciences participated in. They discussed a number of vital issues related to media and the risks and challenges it faces. The Minister of Information Affairs, Ali al Ramehi, stressed Bahrain's firm stance, along with Arab and Islamic states, in support of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, led by the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz al Saud. In a statement to Al Hayat newspaper, the Minister voiced Arab and Islamic solidarity with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in confronting suspicious campaigns and conspiracies targeting its sovereignty and pivotal standing as the cornerstone of security, stability and economic progress in the region and the world. He hailed the pivotal role played by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in leading the nation, advocating its just causes, being the pillar of the Arab nation and the cornerstone of moderate Islam. He added that the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia will remain through its initiatives to support peace and combat extremism and terrorism. Al-Ramehi described the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia as a towering fortress healing its religious, historical and civilizational symbolism, stances and landmark services to humanity. He said the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia will always remain stronger than ever to foil petty designs and attempts that target its security and stability. The Head of Legislation and Legal Opinion Commission and Executive Director of 2018 elections, Nawaf Abdullah Hamza, said the Elections Supervisory Committees began today receiving candidacy requests for parliamentary and municipal elections. The registration for candidacies for parliamentary and municipal elections started today, Wednesday, and will go on for five days to end on Sunday, October 21st, from 5pm to 9pm. Hampton said candidacies for elections must be presented to the Elections Supervisory Committees in each governorate, which are the Capital Governorate at Khala Secondary School for Girls, Muharraq Governorate at Al Hadaya Al Khalifiya Secondary School for Boys, the Northern Governorate at Hamid Time Primary School for Girls, and the Southern Governorate at Amastakabal Primary School for Girls. Hamza called on those aiming to register to bear in mind the conditions for candidacy for parliamentary and municipal elections. 
The National Oil and Gas Authority opened the third edition of the Bahrain International Conference on Corporate Social Responsibility, CSR, today under the patronage of the Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. CSR is a strategic concept that includes business management, science, which is in the forefront of sponsoring charitable activities, programmes, conferences, exhibitions and sporting events based on the existence of legislation, regulations and laws governing the work of CSR in various countries of the world. The Minister expressed a sincere thanks and appreciation to the Chairman of the Board of Bahrain Social Responsibility Association, Khaled Akoad, and the Council of Social Responsibilities in the Eastern Region, the members of the organising committee, the supporting companies and all participants. This patronage is a testament of the importance that His Excellency gives to this kind of event and to the corporate social responsibility. And also the National Oil and Gas Authority and the companies under the umbrella of the National Oil and Gas Authority gives this issue high importance. This is a very important conference that we're hosting for the third time where we are exchanging the knowledge of the best practices of the corporate social responsibility as well building an awareness within the GCC countries about the importance of this topic. We are having also a very important uh, research papers which is coming from Saudi Arabia and this is the council of the CSR departments within the Eastern Province Council. Bahrain National Pavilion at GTEx received about 5,000 visitors during the first two days of its opening. The exhibition, which is supported by Tamkeen for the 11th consecutive year, includes 60 Bahraini IT companies, including 20 startups, in addition to the Ministry of Communications and the e-government authority. Chief Executive of Tamkeen, Dr. Ibrahim Janahi, expressed his satisfaction with the successes of the Bahraini ICT industry through its participation in GTEx, as Tamkeen is a strategic partner and the official sponsor. Dr. Janahe inspected the platforms of 40 Bahraini companies. He stressed that Tamkeen's sponsorship of GTEx comes within the scope of its ongoing efforts to enhance the position of Bahraini information technology industry and attract direct foreign capital to meet the goals of Bahrain's economic vision 2030. On the second day of Bahrain's pavilion, many events and activities took place, such as intensive visits, signing agreements, launching new products and services, and presenting lectures and presentations in addition to the launch of a number of companies participating in the innovative services in the global market. As part of Discover America Week 2018, US Ambassador Justin Sibirel visited yesterday American restaurant chains in Bahrain Avenues Mall, noting the success of American products and franchises in Bahrain under the Bahrain-US Free Trade Agreement. More in this report with Hiba Abdel Ghaffar. The U.S. Embassy highlights the long-standing mutually beneficial partnership between Bahrain and the United States that allows them to enhance each other's strengths and capabilities. This partnership is built upon an enduring friendship that binds the two people and enriches both societies. This week, as the Discover America Week 2018 is celebrated, the spotlight is shined on one of the strongest pillars of this strong relationship, deep commercial ties. It runs from October 14th until the 24th, celebrating American commerce and innovation in Bahrain, including food, retail outlets, tourism, medical innovation, entrepreneurship, technology, services, and much more. Business between the two countries is booming. It's actually doing extremely well. I think, as most people know, I hope, we enjoy a free trade agreement between the United States and Bahrain that was signed in 2005. And since then, starting in 2006, we've more than doubled uh, our, our, our bilateral trade. In fact, about two and a half times, from $782 million in 2005 to $1.9 billion in 2017. And in fact, in 2018, the trade is uh, up 54 percent from 2017. So we're seeing really significant increases. And it's across all sectors. The U.S. ambassador stopped and met employees at many of the U.S. restaurants in the Avenues complex, highlighting the success of American franchises in Bahrain under the U.S.-Bahrain Free Trade Agreement. 
Trade between the two countries is booming. The Bahrain-U.S. Free Trade Agreement is one of only two of such agreements the United States has with GCC nations. And it's the most significant symbol of this economic bond. During the Discover America Week, the U.S. ambassador is visiting the American restaurant chains, enjoying the positive business environment in Bahrain under the Free Trade Agreement. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffour.